While the history of Charleston is what drew us to living here, when it came to our own home, we were seeking to create something that was really quite unique. So much so that our first architects actually fired us as our vision made them leery. That's when Peter Block stepped in. Peter and I share a wonderful work history ourselves. He got our vision immediately and took it to the next level by suggesting that we remove the second floor. Now the open living concept is married with the experience of walking into the original 1790 home. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I knew you were going to bring it to the next level when you told me you were creating this house here, but I didn't expect something like this. I just, it's taking my breath away. When I designed this space, it was really key to me to have a lot of flexibility within this open room. So what we found is that this furniture will float and become seven different configurations. Because you guys entertain a lot. We do. Honestly, it's something that is a real bond between Ray and I. We really enjoy it. Oftentimes we're here at this table in front of the fireplace. But you know what? We really try to utilize the whole house. Joe, I'm just getting lost in all the vignettes in this house. Everywhere I look, it's a reflection of you and Ray and your life together. And I know being a stylist and photography is literally in your DNA and in your blood and in your work world, but how you've translated here and where you live is just remarkable. My father was a photographer and I worked as um, a, a stylist for 30 plus years. So it's how my eye sees, it's my point of view. But what's interesting is obviously when you're styling for a job, mm -hmm. for work, yeah. you want everything to be perfect for the camera. But what I find so fascinating about here in your own home, you of course walk the walk and it looks <laughs> perfect, but there's a realness to it. You actually do it here as well. I know that if I came back and surprised you next week, this house would still look as amazing as it does now. I don't want people to think, oh, I'm sure she just styled it because <laughs> Susanna and Stacy were coming. It looks like this way in different incarnations, I bet, all the time. Guilty as charged. That is very much the case. And it's just the joy that I get of, out of having cool collections, out of seeing the pairings of things. For instance, I love typography and I love pattern. And the unifying theme here is exactly that. From these matchbooks that Ray and I had made to commemorate our wedding, to the faces, to the prints, to the pattern, it just all, in my eyes, seems really perfect, but also imperfect, because that's a real important thing with me. I'm sorry I'm being so nosy, but you've put your day-to-day -day flatware in a diptyque container, which looks beyond chic. I mean, look at what you've done here. This is genius, and it's almost like an art installation. Well, I love it this. And remember when I said that I love topography mm -hmm. and all things related to that, I couldn't stop. And I collect these spoons and get this wonderful engraver in Atlanta to put different numbers on them. And then when I set a table, it's random, it's interesting, it's always a conversation starter. It's just something that I think is special. Jill, is it okay if I have one of these things? Of course. Have you? Oh, oh. Talk to me about this amazing tile situation. I love it. It's so subtle, but as you get closer, it gets, it, it comes alive. I mean, well, that's alive. the quality of Zalige tile. These are Moroccan, they're handmade. There's a range of colors, even though they say that they're gray. I think there's probably 70 different colors in here. Talk, what is this? Sorry, I've been meaning to ask you. That's my non-hood. I can't stand a hood. Over I the show. Hoods too. So although this sounds like a 747 when we turn it on, <laughs> it's kind of worth it to me. But this acts as our exhaust fan. It's like jewelry. I kind of want to wear it as a pendant over my neck. Uh, Jill, these clothespins. I'm sorry. I'm again obsessing over your obsessions. All these little clothespins each have a heart on them, which I know that you probably did. I'm. I, firstly, I just love utilitarian objects. 
and there's nothing more basic than a humble clothespin and I Agreed. take a brander and I just put this little this little heart on it and this is actually part of a logo for my company name stable and I use these for the tabletop to put place cards on I clip my mail together oh, geez, I sometimes I use them in my hair I just oh. use them a lot I love all these bracelets that you have what? just in both aluminum. Yeah, I love these. This looks like a library. How is it a guest room also? Well, given that it's the first room off the hallway, it was important that this not feel like a bedroom. Right. So my solution to that was to have a Murphy bed that had a table connected to that. What? So that, I know. I Are know. you crazy? Wait, there? It's true. So I take all these things off. I take this photograph down. Right. This table goes up, and then I have a hook, and these are the legs of the bed, and that comes down. Can you put these right here? Sure. I think I have every line in Charleston corner for tonight's party. Right? Yeah, I, I like to use beans, black beans, black eyed peas, rather than moss. I, make, I think it makes just such an interesting, cool statement rather than seeing the dirt and that's and like so 39 easy. cents. Yeah, I think I'm going to be copying this immediately. I hope you do. And look how chic it looks with the black of the beans with the, you know, with the pot and the myrtle. I just, and being the stylist that I am, I have to say I removed all the little twist ties and replaced it. Chill, this is next level, but you're right, oh my gosh. I wanted to show you what I'm scheming and dreaming about for a weekend retreat that we're building about an hour away from here. There's an influence happening in this house which is completely different than how we live here. And these portraits, these are all going to be hanging in the kitchen. It's going to be olive green and very dark. So those are going to be attached to the to the fronts of the kitchen drawers along with these. Okay, wait, knobs. sorry. I know this is the, why you do such beautiful work, but I love how you already know the micro detail of certain things, but you're using it as a way to inform the overall picture too, because the house isn't finished yet. No, no, it'll be done in a couple of months, but that's my brain goes to those kind of details as I also am kind of doing a bigger plan. I'm truly a frustrated architect, but it's been fun to collaborate with people and to be able to really work on space. Because as much as I love all the tiny details, what's most important is the space and getting that right. The proportions, the scale, just so that people feel great in these, in these rooms. Is this what the little keyholes are gonna look uh -huh. like? How about that? Jill, I love in here how you've hung your great, great uncle's impressionistic landscape on the wall in kind of a very deliberate manner here, but isn't that his also here that you've just propped on the headboard? It is, and I love leaning art. I think it, it creates just such a great casual and non-committal moment. And I just think it means that if I want to have this one here, or if I want to go over here and pop it up on this stool, that that just feels really great. And so many people would be scared to put their painting low on the ground, below knee level, but I think it draws you over there. It makes me want to touch them. And it makes me also, you forget about when you don't hang it, if you can just you can look at it. Right, and really see it. There's and an I think it also makes things a little less precious. Yes, even it's though a, yes. it is special to me. And I, I can know. tell it's special because it's above your head every night, but it makes you have a re tangible relationship with it. That's so true. I love that. I set my tables the way I love to dress, by being inspired by found objects, whether they're in nature or in a flea market. It's all about unique textures, layers, and accessorizing for me. Susanna, do you remember when I was saying I'm just starting to get into a little color? This is kind of what I mean. I can't have a sofa made out of that, but how fun is that? Great, huh? <laughs> Susanna, I thought this would be a great place for you to change for the party tonight. Uh, yes. Hello. This is like an entirely different environment. Well, it's this, like we're in Greece now. Well, this was the original floor. We tried to just make this a different moment in time. Everything got whitewashed. In fact, 
high gloss because downstairs is all stone. Yes, it's all stone mixed with a little bit of oak. So this this was a departure, and I love the fact that this and the adjoining bedroom, excuse me, bathroom, just have this different moment. Totally different moment. And uh, can we talk about this? This is like part incredibly long bed lounge. Banquette. I mean, I'm sure you designed this from scratch. What was your Actually, inspiration? I did, and the idea here was that couples uh, are sleeping head to head, toe to toe, something of that nature, and then we can also kind of use this as a lounge spot. Post party gossip. Yes, exactly. We will convene here. We can catch up and break it down. Um, but wait a minute. We don't have that much time. No, I need to go. I'm back. sorry. You okay. need to go get changed. I guess just come back and get me. Okay. I will. Okay. Bye. bye. I'm so excited to be in here.